Well, hello, my student. Welcome to Exploring Technology, the home of Tech Twos. Okay, let's get right into it here. I know your first question is, is like, what the heck are Tech Twos? First of all, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Mr. Flickinger. Most of my students call me Mr. Flick. So if we've not met before, you got to know that. If you've already taken my class before, you're like, why am I watching this presentation again? It is because I change things all the time and you need to watch this again. If it's your first time in my class, this is all very important information that you've never heard before. So either way, we're going to continue on. What the heck are tattoos? They simply are just physical representations of skills, tech skills that you've proven that you're really good at. Okay. So if we look at the screen right here, you can see that this student here, uh, you know, I got a pile here. I got some digital art, uh, sorry, digital art level two, where it's cartooning, digital art level one, mobile photography, and they just stick on your MacBook case. Uh, they are removable stickers, so they, they you can leave them on for a couple of years and then remove them and they just are great. They won't like scratch off and stuff like that. So they're really good that way. All right, let's continue on here. Okay, so uh, you learn and you do these projects from a website that I made called mytech2s.com and they're just little video tutorials. We're gonna walk you through all that in just a moment. But anyhow, you just follow it. Uh, like let's say you're doing digital art and it says, okay, go pick this brush. And then you go over to the iPad and you pick that brush. Pick this color. Okay, I'll pick this color. Now draw the sun. Okay, I'll draw the, you know, like you just watch the video, you pause it, and then you follow along and you do it. And then once you get the skills, then you create really cool things on your own. And then you turn that in as a project. I grade it and give it back to you and um, you earn the sticker. Okay, so that's how that works. All right, so um, just to be clear, the tattoos are kind of just a little buffet. I really believe that middle schoolers should try lots of different things during their middle school years to kind of see where their interests and their talents are. So think of it this way, you know, that it's not gonna be a full-blown animation course that'll take you a year to do. No, it's just gonna be a little one that you'll learn the basics of animation and be like, oh, I like this. I mean, maybe I'm gonna do a career as an animator, you know, whatever, that kind of stuff. So uh, speaking of grading, I work on a point system and you have to earn so many points for the semester to be able to pass my class. You earn these points by doing level one projects are worth one point. They're easy projects. They usually only take one or two class periods. Level two take you about five class periods and you will get two points. See that? Level two, two points. And then level three gives you three points and they're harder. Level threes are really hard and they take you maybe a couple weeks to do, but you will earn three points for those. Okay. If uh, I know you're thinking like, okay, so how many points do I need? And this is kind of confusing. So listen to me here. If this is your first year, not first semester, but if this is your first year taking my class, then you have to earn seven points during this semester, okay? If, say, you had my class last year and now you're coming back, so this would be your second year, then you would have to earn nine points. And if you've taken my class for before, like probably like if you're an eighth grader, then you would have to earn 12 points. But let's say you're an eighth grader and you just moved into ACS, this would technically be your first year. So an eighth grader sitting over here might be having to, to get 12 points, but you would only have to get seven because it's really your first year taking exploring technology. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, come talk to me later, but it's based on your year, not on your semester, because sometimes I have students take it twice in the same year, and that technically would be still the same year. So, the, so that's what it is. First year is seven points. If you've had me before and you, this is your second year, it's nine, and if you've had me, for two years, you got to do 12 points. And it's because you guys get so good at these things and you're doing level three projects. So at 12 points, you'd have to only do four level three projects and you'd be you'd be done 12 points. So so that's how it works. Let's look at some examples here. Um, example one, a student did webcasting level one for one point. Then they did coding for one, music one. Ooh, they liked it. So they did music two for two points. And then they did photography level one and art level one. They're kind of just new. So they're sampling the level one projects. That gives them seven points, okay? Now this student needs to earn nine, but they've also done things before. So they're doing, you know, coding level one, two, and three. They're really getting good at coding. So that gives them a lot of points. And then animation one, animation two, and that gives them their nine points for the semester. Example three is someone who's done things before. So maybe like the years before they did radio one and two. So they jumped right into radio three, earned three points, and then they tried graphic design didn't really like it, so they just earned the one point, didn't go on to number two. Music they loved, so you can see they did one, two, and three, 
and then animation two because they probably had done animation one the year before and that gives them a total of 12 points, okay? I hope that makes sense. You can freeze frame on this if you need to take a look at it some more, but that's how it works. Now, the class is self-directed and self-paced. You are, you know, you're watching videos, you're building your own stuff. You don't need to wait on anybody else. You're, you're going as fast as you want or as slow as you want to do it. And that can kind of sometimes be tough, okay? And just like a lot of things, sometimes they're not fun until, you know, you get, you master a skill. Like, like I talk about like dribbling a basketball. I mean, when you first, it just, the ball is going everywhere and it's not very fun. And you're like, why do people even play basketball? This is not fun at all. You know, like remember back in second grade? And then suddenly you're like, oh, wait, I can dribble this ball. I can dribble without looking. And now I'm like, oh, I can go all over the court. That's how tech is as well. Sometimes it's really frustrating at the first, but if you stick with it, show a little bit of grit, you're going to have a lot of fun with it, okay? All right. Uh, I do get this question a lot. And yes, you have to always start at level one. Even if you went to some coding camp during the summer and you're familiar with it, jump into level one, fly through it as quickly as you want until you get to where you need to be, okay? Um, now, the tech twos are kind of like learning to ride a bike. Level one, you got the training wheels on. I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do. There's not a lot of creativity to level one projects because you're doing it kind of exactly what I tell you to do. Level two, I start to back off a little bit and I'm like, okay, here's a little bit more control for you. You can be more creative in what you're doing. It's taking you longer, but it's doing it. And like the kid here, the bike, now, now she's going off-roading. She's going doing whatever she wants to do. And then finally, level three, you can see with the, the guy in the jungle here on his bike, he's going crazy. He's having fun. Level three projects are that way. And honestly, some of the level three projects, I don't know how they really work. You know, they're really advanced projects. I mean, I kind of know, but I don't know step by step how they work. You're going to have to solve a lot of that on your own, which makes you an independent learner. And of course, I'm here to help you, but uh, you're going to do a lot of really cool stuff. And, and that's what it opens up for you. So, so think of this as maybe animation. Animation one, very simple, do some claymation. Animation do, two, you're doing some hand-drawn animation. And then animation three, you're doing digital animation because now you've got a lot of skills and you can do really cool things. So that's how it works. Uh, sometimes you work just by yourself. Sometimes you might work with a partner. Sometimes you might work with a group. Uh, just remember that only the person really doing the work is gonna get the tech too. So if you bring some people over to help with a video, they're not gonna get the tech too because they're not doing any of the editing. They didn't write the script. They're not directing it. They're just helping out and we help each other all the time. But if you're in there and you are working with say a partner or a group and everybody's doing everything, then all of you can earn the tech too, but that's not very uh, common, okay? It's quite rare. So everybody has to do the work to be able to earn the tech too, all right? Just because you were on someone's podcast doesn't mean you get the podcasting tech too. Um, there are no formatives or summatives in this class, but there is a catch. You've always got to check in, and I'll show you how to do that in another video, but you got to check in at the beginning of every class. You go in there, you tell me what you're doing. It's how I do attendance, and it also lets me know since I don't do formatives and summatives, how you're doing and what you're working on and if you need some help. Uh, we turn in work in a timely manner. We do proof of work videos. Uh, how you turn in work, I'm gonna again in another video show you step by step how to turn in a video and another video on how to do proof of work videos. So that's coming. Uh, please don't give up on the projects. Um, you might send it to me and then I might send it back saying, hey, you forgot to do this in the podcast. Uh, so you have a choice. You can either walk away from it and go do something else, or you can be, oh, I'll go fix that. It'll take me you know, two minutes to fix that in the podcast, and then I'll send it back to Mr. Flick. You have that choice, but I'm gonna ask you to please don't give up, stick with it. If I send it back to you because it's not quite right, just fix it and give it back to me so I can grade it. I'm just encouraging you to stick with it, but hey, if it turns out to not be your thing, you're like, I really don't like 3D design, I tried it, then move on to something that you might love, okay? So that's how that works. Uh, can I repeat a tech two that I've already earned? No, you cannot repeat a tech two already earned. Um, you do need to bring your own headphones. You always have to have headphones in class and any adapters or dongles for your MacBook. So if you can plug in to like the mixer board or other things, you need to have that little adapter for your USB on the side of your, your MacBook. So you need to have that. Uh, you do need to have iMovie installed. Uh, if you're going to use like podcasting and music making, you need to have GarageBand. And those take like an hour to download. So make sure you have those installed before you start class. And you might need to install Scratch if you're going to do some, some 
programming. Uh, the Tech 2s are in beta, meaning that there might be some mistakes in the instructions or something, but just let me know and I can fix those for you. And if you want updates, and this is optional, of course, but you can follow me on Instagram, Mr. Flick Tech, and I'm always posting cool things from the class. I'm so proud of the, the things um, that you guys will do in class. It always works out great. Um, a word or two about the quality of the projects. You guys really, really push yourself to do great work. Okay, I'm going to really tell you that. Do great work. This is your chance to really do amazing things and really take that chance. If it's garbage and you just, I can see that you're just like, oh, okay, I didn't put much work into this, I will send it back to you. Okay, I really do expect you to do great work. So make sure that you do that. Um, there's three things I really want to talk to you about, and that's when um, you do video work. These are my unforgivable sins, and that's bad audio. Make sure your audio is always great. I'll show you how to do that in an upcoming video. Um, bad lighting. There's no excuse for bad lighting. I'm, I'm using a light right now on me to get good lighting here. And of course, uh, high resolution images. If you give me something like this, this little pixely little flower here, I'm gonna send it back to you really quick, okay? It, you're in middle school now. You should know how to get high resolution images. And we're gonna be covering that in an upcoming video as well. So make sure to really keep an eye on those things. And I'm gonna talk about what you do when you finish a tech two. You basically, you turn it in, you fill out the form, and then uh, within usually within two days, I'll give you feedback on it, on whether you passed it and you can get the sticker or you need to fix some things on it, okay? If you are ever in doubt, say you go to a Tech 2 like Art 1, Digital Art 1, you're like, what the heck is Digital Art 1 all about? Go look at the student-made examples, and then you would see like the fruit bowl and be like, oh, I get it, we're going to make a fruit bowl, this is great. Or like the cartoon here, that's Art 2, and you go take a look at Art 2 and be like, oh, I get it, we're going to make a cartoon of somebody in class. So. If you're ever in doubt, go to the student-made uh, examples, and you can listen to podcasts, watch videos, look at examples, and it'll make more sense to you, okay? My office hours are always available for you, and email is the best way to contact me. So um, don't use the Google chat, please. Don't put something in classroom. Just send me an email. Uh, if it's allowed, I'm open at lunch, maximum of 24 students. Love to have you come by. And that goes for office hours as well. So uh, there we go. I'll see you in the next video.